In the JMC 134 class, when it comes to our photo assignments, there's three basic steps. And that first one is to photograph the assignment. The second part of the process is to process those photos on a computer. And then the last part of the process is to submit our images to both Google Drive and Canvas. What we're aiming for is to have an assignment folder that's going to contain two subfolders, completed and processed JPEG images, and also the camera raw files that are the raw images that came out of the camera. I've already inserted my SD card, and now what I want to do is get the images that I shot for this assignment off of the SD card. So I'll open it and navigate to the 100 Canon folder. If you have your own Nikon camera, this will be different. It'll just be the DCIM folder generally. So I'm going to drag that 100 Canon folder to my desktop, let it go, and wait for it to copy to the desktop. So I just want to point out, uh, I am updating an older version of this video. So some of the desktop imagery, like in this one, will look different and some of the bridge stuff will look different. Once I've copied my Canon folder to my desktop, I want to rename this. So I'm going to click in here and I'm going to rename this with the assignment slug. That's the one name for the assignment that'll be between your last name and the date on your actual assignment folder. And that's because if I go to back up all my folders and they all say 100 Canon, things will get confusing. So I'm going to just call this example. And if this was a general news assignment, I would probably name this general. Folks, just a quick reminder. Once you have your folder copied off of your SD card onto the computer, it's a good idea to eject the card. Um, you don't want to work directly off of your SD card. So if you eject your SD card and you're working on your files and something happens, you can always put your SD card back in and start the process over. Next, we're going to drag our folder down to the Adobe Bridge icon and use Adobe Bridge to rename our images. Once our images load into Adobe Bridge, I'm going to just hit the Command and A keys on a Mac or Control A on a PC to select all of my images. All of us should have a batch rename template saved. That's under the Tools and under Batch Rename. Or we can push Command Shift R to bring up our template. When our template pops up, we should make sure that we have our text field and our current file name with the name plus extension selected. In this case, I already have the field filled out, but I'm gonna do one last thing and I'm gonna just select from this side of the period. I'm gonna copy and paste in a second this file name. So all of our file names for assignments will be our last name with a period, the assignment name, which will be one word, period, and then the two digit date code for that day that the assignment is turned in. Now, the reason that I'm copying that text field is because I'm going to also create the assignment folder right after I'm finished renaming these images. And our assignment folder is going to have the same name as what we are renaming our images. I also want to point out that at the very bottom of this dialog for renaming our images, you can see a preview that will show you if you've done it correctly. Once I verified that I have the proper file name typed into the field, I can hit return or click on rename in the upper right hand corner of the dialog box. When we turn in our photo assignments for this class, we're going to have an assignment folder. That folder is going to have a name on it. That name is going to have the same name as the images. So after renaming our images, that's why I copied that file name that I created, because I'm going to now use Adobe Bridge to create an assignment folder with our last name, the slug, which is the one name for the assignment, and the date that we're turning it in. Inside of that folder, I'm going to create a JPEG and a RAW folder so that when I'm processing my images, I can quickly put them into these folders so I can turn them in when I'm finished processing. I'm currently in the Essentials workspace in Adobe Bridge. There's two ways I can create a new folder inside of my folder of images. So the first one is I can go up to the File menu, scroll down to New Folder, and click on that. Or I can use the keyboard shortcut Command, Shift, and N. The folder name is already highlighted, so since I've already copied that name from when I renamed my images, I'm going to hit Command and V or Control V on a PC to paste that file name in quickly. Hit Enter and now my file is named. The next step is to double click on this folder and go inside of it. And I'm going to hit Command Shift N and type in JPEG. I'm going to hit Command Shift N and type in RAW. I'm going to do both of those in all caps. And now my assignment folder is ready. All I need to do is process the images and save them in the proper folders. 
it's important that you understand how the navigation in Adobe Bridge works. Across this strip right here, you can see the file path that I'm in. So currently I'm in that folder we just created, our assignment folder that has my last name composed for this particular assignment and the date that we were going to turn it in. The next folder back up is the example folder, which is that 100 Canon folder we renamed after we dragged it to our desktop. I can click on example and jump back into that folder very quickly. To hide the assignment folder that's showing up now, I can use the filter panel and select just camera raw images so I'm not looking at the folder while I select my images for editing. Next, I'm gonna to switch to the film strip view. This way I can get a larger preview of each of my images. I'm gonna scroll through these by using the right and left arrow keys. And every time I get to an image that I think I might wanna turn in, I'm gonna add a star by pushing Command-1 on a Mac, Control-1 on a PC, or I can use the label from the file menu up here to manually scroll down and select that single star. Once I'm done adding stars to the images I wanna select, I'm gonna switch back to the Essentials workspace. Down in the lower left, you'll see an area that has Collections, Filter, and Export. If Filter isn't selected, go ahead and click that now. Right now I have Ratings as one of my options. I have 27 images that do not have a star, and I have three images that have a star. Those are the ones that I selected to edit for this assignment. So if I want to view just those, I'm going to click on the dialog box so I see just those three. Now I'm going to pick my favorite image out of the batch. I'm going to pick this middle one, and I'm going to hit Command-5 or Control-5 on a PC and add five stars to my favorite one. Now that's going to make that image disappear, so I'm going to have to go down to my collections again and click on the one that has five stars so that it reappears. I've hit Command A to select all of my images, and now I'm going to double click to open them in Adobe Camera Raw. So this is a new feature. I can hold down the Shift key and click all of these, or hit Command A as well. And I can use the Auto Adjust on all three of these, and it should adjust all of them independently. So it should go through and fix all of my images. You'll know that it made individual adjustments to the images if you look at the sliders and the box is empty. See, if I click on one, I'll see some settings changes here. If I click on the other one, you'll see that the sliders are different. But I do wanna make sure that I hit Command A down and make sure all of my thumbnails are selected so that when I do go to open them, I open them in Photoshop all at the same time. It's always a good idea to double check this box down here and make sure that it says 8-bit. If it says 16-bit, you'll click on that box and switch the depth bit from 16 to 8. Once I click Open, it'll open my images into Photoshop. Now that I've got my images open in Photoshop, you can see these three tabs open in the document space. If your Photoshop looks a little different than mine, make sure you're in the photography workspace. It's accessed over on the right-hand side. Hit that drop-down caret right there and scroll down to the photography workspace. You should have created a crop preset by now. There is a tutorial on Canvas on how to do that. So I'm gonna select the crop tool from the file menu on the side, but I can also push the letter C key to activate that. And I'm just going to double click in here very quickly so that we can crop this image down to 10 inches on the long. So we had a preset that we created here that's 10 inches wide. There's nothing for the vertical and 200 for the um, dots per square inch. Now just to show you how this goes, I'm going to actually go to the file menu and scroll down to save, or I can use command S, the keyboard shortcuts for that, and it should pop open a dialog box. If you're using a computer for the first time and you haven't done this before, your settings may look a little different. So first off, it may look like this. It's a smaller box. This is the folder that you're actually working from. Click on this little drop down arrow and it will expand. It will also look a little bit different on a PC. Down here in the file format, it might it might say something like Photoshop. I was doing a demo previously, so it's a different one. I'm gonna click on this and make sure that I switch this to JPEG. And last, I need to remember where my folder is. So this is the folder I created when we were in Adobe Bridge, and that's where my JPEG and RAW folders are. So I'm gonna click on that, I'm gonna select the JPEG, and I'm gonna go down to the bottom of this dialog box and hit save. That's going to pop open the save dialog box, and I'm gonna make sure the quality is set to eight and that baseline standard is selected. When I'm done, I can push enter or click OK. And the next thing I'm gonna do is go up and close this window. So because the crop tool is still active right now, I need to hit escape. Otherwise, it's gonna ask me if I wanna crop it again. When I'm done, I can click on this X to close this window out. This white one is the one I was working on and it has been saved. I'm gonna hit don't save because we already saved it. And we'll complete this process for the next three until all three of our images are in the folder where they need to go. 
Once I've saved all three of my JPEGs, my final step in this process is to take the original camera raw files and copy them using Adobe Bridge into that folder we created that says raw. If you notice the little icon with these sliders, that means that we've made some adjustments in the camera to the camera raw file using the camera raw processor. I'm going to make sure that all three of my images are selected and I can tell they are because they have that blue highlight around them. I'm going to go up to the file menu. And there is no keyboard shortcut for this, so I'm going to have to scroll down to the Copy To and select Choose Folder. That's going to bring up a dialog box, and I need to navigate to my Assignment folder. So remember, I was on my desktop, and I renamed that folder Example that was our 100 Canon folder originally. Because we renamed everything, my folder should appear right at the top. So here's the Assignment folder. I don't want to select JPEG. I want to select RAW because we're going to copy the RAW files into this folder. Bridge is going to not only copy the RAW files, but the XMP files that have the star ratings and the changes we made in Adobe Camera RAW. So when I hit Choose, it'll happen pretty quickly. And now I have copied my RAW files with the XMP files into that Assignment folder so that I can upload those to Google Drive and submit my five-star JPEG to Canvas. Next, I want to verify that everything went to the right spot. So I'm going to come over to the filter area again. I'm going to deselect the one-star rating. And if file type isn't expanded, I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to click on the one that says folder. And the reason I want to do that is right now I just want to get to that folder quickly. I'm going to double-click to enter that. And I'm going to double-click again. I see that my three JPEGs are in there. I'm going to use the navigation up here to go back. And I'm going to double click in here and see that my camera raw files are in there. Now, if you look down at the bottom, it says three items, three hidden. Those three hidden items are our XMP files. And remember, those are the ones that store the changes that we make so that we don't actually change anything to the original camera raw file. I like to verify that everything's in the right spot before I upload it to the Google Drive. I've already navigated to our class Google Drive, but I want to show you where things are going to go. So when we turn in a photo assignment, we have a folder called Photo Assignments. In this example, we were working on Compose, which is our composition assignment. I'm going to double click on that Canon folder that's on my desktop. I'm going to drag this window down so I can see a little better. And I'm going to go to my assignment folder, and I'm going to drag and copy it over here. Now remember, I need to hold down the Option key to get that plus sign to come up so that I copy the folder and don't move it to the Google Drive folder. So I'm going to drop this in here. So once I start uploading my files, I want to make sure that I check up here where the Google Drive icon is to make sure that it's done spinning before I close everything down. I want to make sure that everything uploads and that I see everything is up to date. If I close down my windows and log out of my computer before that's complete, all of your files will not be uploaded to Google Drive. Once we've done that, we're going to go back in and use Canvas to find our favorite image from that JPEG folder. So we'll navigate back to this folder in Canvas and find whichever one of our JPEGs we think was the best image from that assignment. And then when you upload that uh, favorite JPEG to Canvas, not only do I know when you uh, completed the assignment, but then I can use the speed grader to give you a grade. So those are the steps that we will take for each of our photo assignments from here on out, and that is how we will submit our photo assignments for our class.